Hello, my name is Brother Sean, for those who don't know me. And my fancy dress little number is the uniform that I wear as a member of the Teo community of interspiritual Franciscans. And the theme for this short video, are you razzled, dazzled or frazzled? Well, I've just returned from a rather interesting trip to our large teaching hospital in Lancaster where I had to have a CAT scan on my lungs. And what an experience. Sat in the waiting room, you meet such interesting people. Some look razzled, some were ready to dazzle and most were frazzled. And as I sat there waiting for my name to be called for my 1.30 slot, I clearly sat in someone else's seat because the guy sat next to me, quite a burly looking guy. He was non-pleased, but I should have gathered from the seat because it was quite warm and there was a handbag underneath. So I asked him, should I move to another seat? If you want. Clearly not a very happy man. And then there was a lovely old lady, quite disabled, in a wheelchair. And she wanted to talk. She clearly, I could see from her eyes, that she wanted to have a natter and probably pour her heart out. But the daughter looked frazzled as well. And none too pleased that I wanted to engage in conversation with her relative. And it's so interesting today when you get out and about and you look at people and you people watch. I don't get a lot of opportunities to do that now that I'm an enclosed contemplative Franciscan. But when I do go out, it's usually for a, a doctor's visit, the dentist, or a hospital visit. But it's amazing when you look into people's eyes that's if you can see them, because so many people are walking around with their head down, with the weight of the world on their shoulder. And you try and you say, good morning, good afternoon, and they look at you and you get a grunt. The occasional one will acknowledge you. Some look at you and think, oh my God, a man in a frock. Let me dazzle you not frazzle you. By reading to you the thought of the day for yesterday, which we read at our twilight vigil at midnight here on live stream. And it says compassion. And it would appear that many of us are lacking compassion today. We're so preoccupied, aren't we, with our own minutiae, our own worries. And understandably so, because we are living in anxious times. And let me continue. Compassion. What is compassion? Well, Stan says it's about living with an open heart. And the work of compassion, the work done by people who care for the sick, the work done by people who are supporting those who are depressed or lonely or poor or excluded. This is work of great spiritual value. Seeing the work of compassion as a spiritual undertaking is in no way to diminish the importance for this work of things like training, experience, professionalism, special gifts or skills, and a sense of humour. Quite the reverse, she says. Our particular talents and qualifications are more likely to come to the fore when we have a richer and more spacious sense of who we are. And Li Po says, he who neglects to drink of the spring of experience is apt to die of thirst in the desert of ignorance. 
<coughs> Excuse me, what's that saying to you? Well, interestingly, what I find today is that I have many people who phone me and email me pleading for prayer in a dreadful state. Some, their situations are horrendous to even repeat on a short video. And many of them are gripped by fear. They're frazzled. There's no razzle-dazzle in their life because they live on a knife's edge. Isn't that sad? And I ask myself, why is this happening to so many people today? And it's not just the ordinary people, the lay person, but to a lot of light workers, therapists, professional people. They're just frazzled. You get the feeling that you're on a different plane. And you know, when I suggest to those that contact me for help, I try to pray with them on the phone, of course, with their permission. And if they agree, they usually feel wonderful afterwards because maybe it's the first time they've ever engaged with someone who's willing to put themselves out, go an extra yard or two. But that's the that's the price we pay for living in a modern world. Communication via the internet, the iPhone and the mobile phone. Whilst a good vehicle to have for communication, but it blocks people being able to share how they feel on a one-to-one. -one. Is that how you are in your life today? Lacking true compassion, a true understanding of who you are, why you are here, what's your life purpose? Or are you just here for the sake of being punished? That's not how I see it. Oh yes, I made a lot of mistakes myself. Some I learned from, some I didn't. But the art of a frazzle-free life is not to engage with your drama, your fear, and to try and isolate yourself from those who are in crisis. Be there by all means. Offer support, but don't engage with the drama. Protect yourself. Surround yourself with love and peace. And Jesus himself, and for those who don't know who he was, the barefoot Galilean, the son of Joseph, the carpenter's son, when he was frazzled with ministering unto others, he took himself off on a 40-day retreat. When is it the last time that you retreated from the world, from your home, your everyday living and all the problems? When was the last time that you actually had a treat, a treat as we say here, and you gave yourself permission to find who you are and why you're here and what your purpose is. Not to do that is really a crime against our beautiful mind, body and spirit, don't you think? We need such times for respite, a weekend away but many can't afford that now. So what do we do? There must be a park nearby where you can go and have a little picnic and chill, get away from the phone, leave your mobile at home and try and switch off to the mind where so many voices are clamoring for your attention and some of them, I dare say, have you rooted in fear. 
So let the spirit of God's love razzle and dazzle you and empower you to come back and face that part of you that's frazzled. Embrace it, bless it, release it. So that you too can razzle and dazzle with the rest of society. Don't you owe it to yourself. Try it. Thank you.